San Diego just wrapped up its pride celebrations, and while June is the designated pride month, there's an effort to continue this momentum of acceptance year round. I'm joined now by Dr. Perry Halkidis, who is the Dean of the School of Public Health at Rutgers University and an LGBTQ health researcher. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So as you know, June was selected as Pride Month in part to commemorate the Stonewall riots. Can you just briefly tell us about that period of time and the significance? June 28, 1969 was a historic day for LGBTQ people. It is the day in New York City at a bar called the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village that LGBTQ people of all races, cultures, sizes, and shapes said to the police, you're not going to arrest us anymore. You're not going to come in and harass us anymore. And there began a multi-day set of riots where LGBTQ people fought the police and demanded that they had the right to love and live their lives openly. And that is marked as the beginning of the LGBTQ civil rights movement, happening at the same time as the African American civil rights movement is, the women's civil rights movement happening, and it is marked, June is therefore marked as the historic um, um, indication of the beginning of LGBTQ pride, and therefore we celebrate pride in June. And you've written a book about this period, and in it you talk about the generational differences between gay men. And in what ways would you say a, a gay man's experience today might differ from someone a generation before and even a generation before that? I mean, it would be very easy to say it's easier to be a gay man now than it was 50 or 60 years ago. And in some ways it is. There is There are higher levels of acceptance, although in the last few years that's also been on the downslide. Um, there are more representations in the media of LGBTQ people. However, the feeling that a young person has when they're three or four or five years old, a feeling different, a feeling othered, is pretty consistent across time. And the messages that we receive from society, that all marginalized people receive from society, including gay men, that they are lesser than, permeates every single generation. So I think the psychological process is similar. What is different is the representation of LGBTQ people in our society at large. You write that pride should be celebrated year round. Can you explain why that's so important? What I want is a celebration of every person, of every diverse culture, gender, sexual orientation to fill our history books all year long. Only then do we say, look, America looks like this. Until we change that, America continues to be this sliver of white straight men. And can you tell us about, um, there's a chapter in your book where you touch on substance use and the effect of gay men's health. Um, can you expand on that? Sure. I think that what I've learned over my research program over the last two decades is that when individuals are marginalized, when they are put upon, when they experience stressors, when they experience harassment, they often don't have the coping mechanisms to deal with those negative feelings. Substance use is one way that people, not only gay men, but other folks, ameliorate those feelings, lessen those feelings. The problem is when the substance use gets out of control, it becomes a dependence. So my argument is if you want to get rid of substance use in the gay community, you have to have more tolerance and acceptance and love of LGBTQ people. And how could we as a society promote that? We can promote love and acceptance by just normalizing everybody's lives so that, that we don't have this idea that an American is one thing. An American is millions of different things. And by reacting in ways that treat everybody on an equal, equal playing field, that's how we normalize people's lives. And that's how we take away the feelings of marginalization that people experience. What needs to be done to really promote this? So we need structural interventions. And we live in, I live in one state and you live in another state that is ahead of the game. California and New Jersey are the two states in the United States that now require that LGBTQ history be taught in schools. When you start at a very young age, when you include the life experiences of Sylvia Rivera and Harvey Milk and all those LGBTQ leaders in the history books from the, and you teach young children at a young age, that's how you change a society. And you know, California and New Jersey, God bless these two states. They are so ahead of the game. Thank you so much. Thank you.